Let's get started on creating a graphical user interface without using guide. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put my initial code of the CLC clear, close all, or close all variation that I want to use. That way I'm closing everything out, starting with a clean slate every time I run my code. The first thing we need to do once we get started there is creating our first figure. So this video is just going to be covering that figure and what kind of options, properties, what can I change with that figure? Many times in practice, I'm going to want to change features about that figure later on, or I'm going to want to call it. So it's important that I actually assign it to a variable. Let's say it's your first time creating a GUI in MATLAB, or maybe your first time ever. It'll be really important that you understand how to approach these different functions you're going to use and how to explore the different properties within them. So I'll cover some of those troubleshooting techniques as we go through just the figure function. So again, this video is all about the figure function. So once I get started and I have my figure and you see it popping up, I want to go ahead and see what kind of properties are within that figure. What can I change? The first one I'm starting with here is position because a lot of times you're going to want to change where your figure is popping up and what size it is. So this is just the first most basic change that I'm going to make to a figure. So I can go ahead and change the different position and just make it a custom hard coded place. But as I run this code in, on different laptops, computers, different places, the screen size is going to be different. And this is all based on pixels right now. Now I could change this to be based on normalized, meaning everything is going to be a percentage. And then that way I'm saying a percentage for a position and percentage of the screen. That's one option. Another option is going about this way of figuring out what is the size of my user's screen. So the first thing I'm going to run is say, okay, explore what the size of their screen is. Once I know the size of my screen of whoever's running my code, then I can say that's the screen size I want my figure to be. So now I've started off with a full size screen. So now that we have that one covered, let's just go through the list and let's explore some of the different properties you might want to change. Maybe you want to change your color. So you'll notice the color has these three different numbers. And I might not know what those numbers mean, or I might know what they mean. But one of the things you can do is just explore, try to figure out what they mean. So I'm noticing again that originally they're in a decimal form, it's 0.94. So I can kind of assume that maybe it's a percentage zero to one. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I do one zero zero. So now that I have a red screen, I know that the first position is how much red. And then if I change it and do zero one zero, run it again. Now that I know that it's a green screen, I know the second position is green. And again, with the last position, and I see that that's blue. So I know it's an RGB scale. And I'm gonna go ahead and try some different numbers and let's try all zeros, see what happens. So that's how I get black. And if I want the color white, I can intuitively think, okay, it's probably the opposite, all ones. But if I'm not sure, I can still at least try the opposite. And I do all ones and sure enough, it is white. Again, this kind of exploration is going to be extremely important. If you want to go through and you want to write up your whole own code for a graphical user interface, you're not using guide, you're not using app design, you need to be very good at exploring what do these functions do, what are the properties, how can I change them, what really happens, and all these different steps. So again, let's go through that properties list again. And there might be something on here that I don't cover that you're kind of curious, well, what does that really mean? Well, go explore it on your own. Open up MATLAB and create a figure and change that property and use the same principles that I'm showing here. Every time I'm exploring that property, I put it into apostrophes and then I give it another input argument for what I want it to change it to be. I try to follow the format of what I'm seeing within those properties. So for instance, I'm gonna do the menu bar. And with the menu bar, I don't quite remember what are the options. So instead of figure, I'm gonna say off. And now when I run my code, it gives me this error. But the nice thing is right there in the air, it tells me these are your options, figure or none. So then I can say, all right, rerun it and put none. And now that I have none there, it's telling me, okay, like I can see something has changed. My code is working. It's not giving me an error. And then I look for that change in my figure. So now all those menu bars are gone. And if you don't know what happened, just turn it back to what it was and then keep going back and forth, rerunning it a few times until you figure out what just changed. Now, there may be some cases where nothing changes. For instance, if I change my user data, I'm not going to see any change on the screen. That's just something that's going to be in the background. So user data is a great place to store different information that you want to keep in that main figure that you're going to be using in your functions or different things. So if you need a place to keep data, that's where you store it. And it's hidden. Your user won't see it, but you have it there so you can keep track of information. 
One of the most common ways that I use user data is if I have an Excel file with a bunch of different data in it and I import that data in, a lot of times I wanna keep that data stored somewhere in a user data. And that way I have it in the background. Or if I have a game going on and I wanna keep track of all my player scores and what they're doing and what's happening, I keep all that data in the user data, just hidden in the background so they don't see it. Another one of the properties I wanna explore is visible. So you might not notice what's happening here, but as I say visible off and I run the code, nothing's popping up. So what's happening is, is it's literally turning it off. It's turning the visibility off. So visible off is going to be very useful when you have buttons or different images or different things that you have embedded in your figure, your main figure. So I have like little things all over the place that are changing as the user is interacting with the code. So sometimes they might click an option and then I want that option to disappear. So I can say visible off. I don't have to delete it. That way I still have all the data. I still have all the information. The button's still there. My user just doesn't see it. I've also explored some other different properties here such as the pointer and you can change what type of pointer you want. And again, I'm just gonna take random guesses sometimes about what I can change that to. And the nice thing is MATLAB will always tell me, okay, nope, these are the other options. You have an invalid option, pick something else. It makes it really easy because then I don't have to go explore all over MathWorks and all over Google and try to figure out what are my options for this. I can just quickly put in an invalid option and then it tells me what the valid options are, which is awesome. So again, just get used to being okay with making mistakes, changing things up, trying different things. A lot of it might be trial and error in the beginning. And even towards the end, like some of it's trial and error. Again, like I said, I didn't remember some of my options for some of the different properties. So I just took a wild guess. And guess what? Some of them did not work out, but they kind of did work out because I got to figure out what I needed. So keep it up and just try different things. Again, this is just an introduction of getting that first figure on there. So getting started with your GUI there. And again, the different principles and methods, techniques that you should be carrying on throughout the rest of your GUI. Coming up really soon, I will be doing a full GUI walkthrough from scratch and I'll go through all of it with you. So if you are gonna be working on a GUI or you're working on a GUI now, please be sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on and that way you can get more information about the GUI coming out. Thanks.